In this project, we're building a fully serverless SSH key generation service on Google Cloud. Users submit requests through an HTTP API. The requests are published in Google Cloud PubSub and then processed asynchronously by Cloud Functions. The resulting SSH key pairs are stored and retrieved from Firestore, all without managing any servers. To make this easy to test, we deploy a simple static web application hosted in a Google Cloud storage bucket. This front end calls our Google Cloud function endpoints directly, letting us submit key generation requests and watch the results come back in real time. The core of this project is a Google Cloud Pub subtopic. Every incoming request is published to this topic and assigned a unique request ID, which lets us track the job as it moves through the system. A pub sub triggered cloud function subscribes to our key gen topic. When a message arrives, Google Cloud automatically invokes the function to generate the SSH key pair. Once the key is generated, the results are written to Firestore. They are indexed by request ID. We store the key metadata, the public and private keys encoded in Base64, and use TTL so the data automatically expires. The service exposes two HTTP endpoints through Cloud Functions. The key gen post endpoint submits a new key generation request. The result endpoint allows you to retrieve the SSH key generation results. The service workflow looks like this. First, a user submits a request to the API. This generates a request ID and puts the request onto the PubSub topic. Once it's on the PubSub topic, a cloud function automatically is triggered, which generates the SSH key pair and then stores the results in Firestore indexed by the request ID. Finally, you can call the results endpoint, which will take that request ID and retrieve the results out of the Firestore table. For testing, we host a small static website in Google Cloud Storage. The web app is intentionally minimal. You simply choose a key type, submit a request, and let the serverless pipeline handle everything from key generation to retrieval. Now let's cover the prerequisites for this project. If this is the first time watching our content, I recommend you start with the GCP and Terraform Easy Setup video. I'll put a link at the top. This provides a step-by-step -step guide to configure Terraform Packer and the GCloud CLI by creating the build identity in the Google Cloud Console and then extracting out the credentials.json and placing it in the root directory of the project so that the gcloud and terraform and packer can use the credentials so what you'll need for this build is you need that google cloud account with the build identity and the credentials.json deployed in the root directory of the project you need to have the gcloud cli and then you need to have the terraform cli for the build the first thing you want to do is go back to the github documentation and navigate to the download this repository section from here, copy the git clone command. In your development environment, paste that git clone command. And this is going to download the code and put you in the correct directory. So the first thing you want to do in all our projects is run a script called check env. So what check env does is it goes through and validates all the prerequisites are installed. So here we got gcloud and terraform. And then it looks for credentials.json and then logs into your Google Cloud account. Here it's saying, hey, you don't have credentials.json. So what I need to do is upload credentials.json from my laptop into the project. I'll run check AMP again, and it comes back and says, you have the prerequisites installed, and you also, uh, the credentials.json is there, and it's valid, it's logged in. So the next thing you gotta do that's very specific to Google Cloud is there are specific APIs we need to enable. So I can run API setup, this may take a couple of minutes. It's gonna enable everything you need from this project. Now we're ready to run the apply. The apply takes about two minutes to run. As always, if you have any questions on this video, please leave it down in the comment section and I will respond. The build has completed. So now let's go into the console and take a look at what got built. The core of this project is the pub subtopic key gen requests. For the most part, we choose the defaults for this configuration. As a part of this configuration, we will also define a subscription, which will trigger a cloud function to generate the SSH keys asynchronously. All the code for this service is deployed as cloud functions written in Python. There are three cloud functions associated with this service. The key gen function is triggered by an HTTP post. It creates a request UID, then posts a message to the topic requesting a new SSH key. The key gen worker function is then triggered by the topic subscription. It takes the incoming request indexed by UUID and generates the requested SSH key pair. Once generated, the results are stored in Firestore, all indexed by the request UUID. 
The results function is triggered by an HTTP GET. It takes the request UID as a URL path parameter and returns the SSH key generation results from the Firestore table. The Firestore table temporarily stores the results from a request. The request record is tagged as valid for an hour after the request is generated. Finally, for testing, we deploy a simple web application in a public storage bucket. For the demo, the first thing you want to do is run validate in your development environment and then copy the web application URL. Now paste the URL into the browser. So from here, all we need to do is run generate key pair and you'll see the request fly by with the UID. It waits and then it gives you the results. So you can do that for the various key types, 4096. Then you can do it for the ed key type as well. So now what we want to do is look underneath the hood to see how this actually works. So I'm going to hit F12 to bring up the browser debugger. And so within the debugger, I can go to my JavaScript code. So the JavaScript is pretty simple. The, the first step is we're going to request the key using the keygen endpoint. It's going to come back and return a UUID. Then we're going to take that UUID and we're going to pull the results endpoint until we come back and it says that the UUID is actually complete. Once it's complete, we're going to display the results of the key into the web application. Another way to look at this is we can go to the network tab, and this will show you the endpoints being called as we use the application. So I'm going to go back to 2048 RSA, hit generate, and we can watch the polling happen and to generate the results. Now, if I go into the endpoint here, you can see the headers are shows you the request URL, which is the results plus the UID in the URL path. Uh, so that that's just a, a really simple get, and you come back and you, you pretty much get the record for this request from the Firestore table. At this point, we've done everything we're going to do in this project. So what you need to do is be a good steward of your cloud account, and we're going to run destroy. Now, destroy takes under a minute. It's very quick.